Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and today we're going to take a look at a wireless keyboard setup from Songcare. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so today we're going to take a look at a wireless keyboard and mouse set. Now, this is from a company called Songcare, which, to be quite honest with you, I have never heard of before in my life, but this actually does look like a very, very nice looking keyboard. This keyboard was sent to me by Songcare. They asked me to do a review. It's not a paid review. They just sent me the, the keyboard and mouse and said, have a look, do a review, tell us what you think. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Now, the thing that first attracted me to this, now I do get offered a lot of reviews of things to do, various companies, but this is actually a little bit different. The market is completely flooded with the kind of gaming, gaming keyboard with RGB this and RGB that or mechanical switches everywhere. It's just, it's all too much. And if you're anything like me and you spend a lot of time typing, you find that these mechanical keyboards aren't actually always that great for typing. Personally, I really love my Microsoft Surface Pro 3. The Microsoft keyboard that comes with it is fantastic. And it's got that kind of chiclet style design key. So it's very flat, but very usable and actually isn't very tiring to use. Whereas with mechanical switches, there's actually quite a lot of movement. Whereas with these kind of keys, it's a lot easier to type, at least in my opinion. Your mileage will definitely vary. Some people prefer that longer keystroke, some don't. Different horses for different courses. So anyway, that's enough of that. Let's just take this thing out of the box and see what it's actually like. So some of the specs of it, it's a 2.4 gigahertz wireless. It comes with a single unifying dongle to connect up. So just one connection. It isn't Bluetooth, which is actually, for me, is a fantastic thing because I do actually find with Bluetooth there is quite a noticeable lag at times. And Bluetooth, to be honest, isn't as reliable as 2.4 gigahertz, in my opinion. So, okay, first of all, we get a silicon cover for the keyboard. And actually, that's actually quite a nice thing. If you're somebody like me and you spend a lot of time sat at your desk typing or writing or whatever it may be, a keyboard cover is actually a really handy thing if you end up kind of stuck at your computer eating your lunch or whatever it is you're doing, drinking a cup of coffee. So there's the keyboard itself, still in its wrapper. Now, wow, look how thin that is. That is incredibly thin. Very reminiscent of the Mac keyboard. So what else do we get? We get our instruction manual, which may come in useful. We'll see. We get a Songkir mouse. Actually, that is, again is very, very slim. That's pretty nice looking. We'll have a, a look in more depth in a little bit. And what else have we got here? There is a USB, micro USB cable. So that is for charging the keyboard, I believe. Now the keyboard itself has got a built-in lithium ion battery, which you charge up with a charging cable. From what I've already read, charging time takes about two hours for a full charge and will give you anything up to 90 days use. They say 35 hours of consistent use. So if you kind of break that down for what I guess three hours a day usage, that's how you get your 90 days. So again, with most things with batteries, your mileage will definitely vary. So let's have a quick read through of some of the specs on the back of the box, just to see if there's anything I've actually missed already, which wouldn't be the first time. So product features, what have we got? So extra thin key design, or extra thin design with durable metal material. All right, so it's, I thought it felt heavy actually. That is actually metal, which is nice to see. Each key is designed to withstand three million strokes. Well, that's, uh, I guess that's uh, debatable. I'm not gonna try that out. Rechargeable keyboard only requires two hours to get fully charged, which we discussed. Automatically switch to sleep mode, which would prevent energy waste and miss operation. Okay, so even if you leave it in the on position on the keyboard, the keyboard itself actually goes into like a sleep mode pretty quickly to prevent any accidental keystrokes, which I guess is a good thing. Three DPI settings for the mouse, so it's 800, 1200, and 1600. Uh, only one USB dongle required to connect the keyboard and mouse simultaneously, as we said. And compatibility wise, we're looking at PC and laptop. They do say on the Amazon listing, which I'll put in the description below, it's fully compatible with Mac and uh, laptops. Sorry, PC and laptops but it's not fully compatible with Mac and Android, those kinds of things. Now I think some of that possibly is the reason because A, unifying 
USB receivers don't always work very well with things like smart TVs, some Macs and uh, Android devices. And also because you've got additional function buttons along the top of the keyboard, those don't always cross over well between Windows and Mac, etc. So again, your mileage will definitely vary on whether or not it's compatible with your device. But if you're with a PC or a Windows based laptop, you can have no problems at all between Windows 7 and Windows 10. Okay, so the instruction manual just says a little bit about charging, keyboard indicators, all that kind of thing. Um, and there's some additional function keys, which there is actually a listing on there of additional functions that are available on the keys. Now again, this is one of the other things which I find actually a little bit different about this keyboard from all the other keyboards that are on the market. But we'll go through that in a second when I get it out of the case in. So first of all, notice, even though it is kind of razor thin, it's actually, there isn't a great deal of flex to it. And Uh, that actually does feel very, very similar to the Microsoft keyboard. So if you're maybe using a Surface Pro, uh, Pro 3, Pro 4, etc., uh, maybe your keyboard's dead or dying, rather than spending 140 or 100 pounds, whatever it is for these at the moment, you could get one of these. Now these actually retail in the UK for about 35 pounds, which equates to, I guess, around about $40 in the US. Again, I'll put links in the show notes below so you can check out for yourself. But actually the keys look almost identical sized. So again, if you do like this kind of layout, which is similar to uh, the Mac, Surface, etc., this is definitely gonna be right up your street. If you prefer the keys with like a longer keystroke, this isn't gonna be for you. But also, again, if you just like a desktop setup where you want things to be quite minimalist and quite compact, again, this is fantastic. There's no uh, blazing RGB anywhere. It just, it does what it's meant to do. Now, the mouse itself, again, is very, very small. So if you prefer a bigger mouse, then this may not be right for you. It's only got the three buttons, so you've got your left click, right click, and your center click. There is a scroll mount, uh, a scroll wheel, which actually has got a very nice notch to it and a rubberized grip, so that's really, really nice. I like that. The DPI button on the top is actually, it's in a position so that it, you won't actually accidentally hit it, but it's there easily to get to if you want to. And actually, even without the batteries in it, there's a, it's a reasonable weight to it. It's not, it isn't like kind of a cheap, lightweight plastic. It actually feels like it has some sustenance to it. And I guess there is an element of aluminium. You've got like a really nice aluminium kind of like laser cut edge around the side, which although it looks really sharp, it actually doesn't feel that sharp. So I've got quite large-ish hands. So yeah, that does fit quite well. I quite like that. And it being, it's a kind of, Ambidextrous design, left-handed, right-handed, it's all good. On the bottom of the mouse, you've got the on-off switch. Same as with the keyboard, you've got on-off switch. Inside here, I presume there is gonna be yeah, battery space for AA batteries and also your USB receiver. So again, single USB receiver. And let's stick a couple of batteries in. And with the extra weight, yeah, actually it feels quite nice, quite, quite balanced as well. It's not, um, this is a really flat surface and there doesn't seem to be any obvious wobble to the mouse, which is a good sign. Okay, so let's have a look at the keyboard. So the keyboard itself, let's try this. Yep, I quite like that. That feels nice already. Now the proof in the pudding is gonna be how, how I get on. I get a lot of questions from you viewers, etc. So this is gonna hopefully make replying a little bit easier. I actually will be trying to use this as my daily driver for a little bit, just to see how good or indeed how bad it is. And if it turns out that it's a complete crock, then I will definitely let you know in a future video or in the comments section below. But at the moment, actually, it seems like it's, uh, it's, it's a really nice keyboard. So I'll go through some of the features along the top edge here. So you've got your on off switch. So if you want to save battery, you can do. Now the power light comes on just to say it's come on. I think that's part of the power feature so it doesn't stay on all the time. So when you press a button, you don't get that constant light on. Or maybe it's because it's not actually connected to, the, to a device. Let's see what happens. Let's, uh, actually, I'll plug it into there. Right, so when the USB is plugged in, 
you get the light come on briefly, I think. Actually, let's try that actually in a app on the surface. And uh, let's get rid of our surface keyboard. And we get ourselves set up here. Oh, turn the mouse on, that'd be useful. Yeah, that's actually a really nice setup. So if you have got a, a tablet device of some sort, this is actually going to be really nice because it's quite narrow. It'll fit in a bag quite easily. Or even if you've got a desktop and you just want something a little, more, a little bit more elegant. The scroll is actually really nice, really responsive. Let's uh, type something into the web. So. Happy days, it works, uh, it works really well. So, sorry, going back to the function key. So along the top, you've got the escape key, you've got a function lock key. So the top row of key keys actually double up. So they're media control and other features, plus your general kind of F key, so F1 through to 12. So if you like using your F keys, then you can lock those. If you use, if you prefer to use the shortcut keys, then you can do that as well. So you've got mute, power, uh, so you've got mute, audio down, audio up, rewind, play, pause, fast forward, the home button, the search button, a favorites button, an email button, nothing on F11, F12, you've got the Internet Explorer icon, so I guess that would bring up your browser of choice. In fact, let's try that right now. Yeah, that opens up Chrome, so we've set Chrome as a default device now. So, awesome, that works well. Now, moving along to the other side. Now, these are some interesting buttons. On this side, you've got cut, paste, select all, and select individual. So, normally when you press the control button to select individual files, say, say for instance, you've got a group of files and you maybe want the first one, the third one, and the last one, you'd normally press the control button, but on this keyboard, you've actually got an extra button specifically for that task and also for the select all, which, again, you can do from a shortcut command with the uh, Windows Shift and can't remember what the key is actually, which goes to prove the point, it's quite handy to have, so you can just press that and do select all. If you're doing video editing and things like that, then those kind of keys are actually really helpful. And if you're doing a lot of typing, copy and paste, again, it's fantastic. For me in the comments section, sometimes I get the same similar question answered a couple, uh, asked a couple of times, so copy paste for me in that situation is gonna be absolutely perfect. So, all in all, a very nice device. Now, charging port you've got on the end there, so micro USB, and again, it's, it's really narrow, really compact. I actually really like it. It's, my initial impression is that it's fantastic, and it's actually gonna suit me personally very well because of the shortcut keys, because of the keystroke, the flatness of it all, and it's actually relatively quiet. Quite often, if I'm having a discussion with people on our Discord server, Sometimes if I'm typing away on a mechanical keyboard or even if someone else on the other side of the line is actually typing with a mechanical keyboard, it actually can be quite frustrating. So this hopefully is going to be a little bit quieter, which will enable smoother communication. You never know. So this has been the Songcare K18 wireless keyboard and mouse combo. I've been Mike. This is Mike's unboxing reviews and how to, and we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.